Not another Steam controller video, I hear you say. Well, yes, it is, but this time we're going to be checking out 2D platformers with the Steam controller in the form of uh, Super Mario World. But to do that, we're going to use the Oculus Rift DK2 and the uh, new Retro Arcade, which is an absolutely incredible full virtual reality 3D uh, emulator, which uh, emulates SNESes, uh, MAME, all the arcade games, everything. And it just allows you to jump in and... Uh, feel as if you're in the 90s. Now, normally there's a little uh, beat, uh, a bo uh, what are they called? <laughs> I forgot what they're called, a little, um, oh dear, what are they called? The, the uh, boom box, that's the word I'm looking for. Normally there's a boom box here and uh, you can play 80s music on that, but we disable that so the copyright please don't come after us. But let's uh, get into the snares and talk about the Steam Controller with uh, 2D platformers. And uh, Let's load it up. There we go. Plug it in. It's exactly like my uh, my SNES I had as a kid. Coca-Cola stains all over it. A complete mess. Uh, that's that's what a SNES was supposed to look like. And uh, there we go. We've got the SNES controller. Now, <laughs> the way I've set this up is that the uh, Steam controller left touchpad I've set up as a, as a D-pad to test that out. And I've also mapped the analog stick as a movement pad. And then the uh, the buttons on the controller are just set up as you'd have normal buttons on a controller. So you can uh, push buttons and have them work like the real thing. But look at this. Push A and it moves on here as well. <laughs> Where does reality start and end? There's no way to tell anymore. But what I've found using the, uh, the left touchpad as a directional pad for these sort of classic arcade games 2D platformers is uh, even though I've fiddled with it a bit, it's not uh, as good as, as the old traditional D-pad. I mean, it does work, and I think with practice you can get used to it, but it just doesn't quite feel as responsive as your traditional D-pad. Um, the biggest issue that I seem to have come across is that if you're doing quick left-right movements, that's a little bit tricky, and you'll notice what tends to happen is you accidentally push down. If I'm going left and right, going left and right, you, it's very easy to accidentally push down. Now, you can fiddle with the Steam controllers and get... Uh, Eliminate that to some extent, and I think with a with a lot of practice, you'll just lift your thumb off the controller, and you'll you know you'll know where it is. So part of it is just having practice and know what to do. But you know, uh, a traditional D-pad is immediately intuitive, and that's sort of the joy of uh, traditional uh, traditional console games is that they're, they're just so simplistic. You can just jump into them. Like anyone could jump into them. A, a two-year-old. Uh, could jump into them and just play straight away without having to get particularly dexterous with their with their fingers. Now, even though the the D pad, oh, actually the the other thing with the D pad is, even though it has a a sort of a cross, a physical cross indented on the Steam controller, uh, it's still also possible to lose the particular placement of your thumb on the pad. Now. Uh, that might not be a problem because you might think, oh, you could just look at your controller. But really, if you're playing a game, you don't want to be looking at your controller. And if you're playing a game in virtual reality, you can't look at your controller. Let's load it back up. Um, but what I, separate to that, what I have found is using the analog stick, though uh, some of you will think that's a bit of a travesty for this sort of game, isn't so bad with the Steam controller. And uh, I'll explain why after we, kill a, after we kill this dragon like a murderous plumber that we are. Super Mario the Murderous Plumber. That's what they should have called it, not Super Mario. It should be the, the Murderous Dragon Killing Plumber. The analog stick, uh, but normally if you were to play platformers with analog stick, it would, oh, that was terrible. It would be absolutely atrocious. Too much talking, not enough platforming. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just going to run away down the hole. Uh, yeah, normally if you were to play a traditional... Mario type game with analog stick would be atrocious because it's just floppy and gooey and not particularly concise. But because of the way the uh, Steam Control analog stick works, uh, where it gives a haptic click when it, when it actuates, where you, you can set it up as to how sensitive it is, so it can be immediately sensitive or delayed or whatever you want. But because it also has a haptic click, un we're just going to walk into that. Unlike um, your, your standard. Uh, Gamepad analog stick, where you where you have to move it to the full extent, or it, it's just not. You, it's hard to tell when you've actually actuated the movement for the game. Uh, the haptic click lets you know that you've actuated it, so it feels a lot more concise and a lot more immediate than than playing. If I was to be playing this with a standard sort of Xbox controller uh, with its analog stick, and bear in mind, if I was to be playing with an Xbox controller. 
I would be using the analog stick because the D-pad on the Xbox controller, in my opinion, is arguably worse than using the uh, the touchpad as the D-pad on the Steam controller. Level complete! Super Mario clear. So, uh, that's Super Mario. What I thought would be interesting would be to just walk around my arcade. Moving over to Street Fighter, we're going to check that out and give it a little bit of a bash. And uh, it has to be said, obviously... <laughs> It's nowhere near as good playing an arcade fighting game w with a gamepad compared to a proper clicky arcade stick. And if I was playing this properly, I would use a proper clicky arcade stick. But again, one thing that the Steam controller does different from other... Whoops. From other... Uh, gamepads is the is the haptic... Oh yes, this just got destroyed. The haptic click that you get to know that you've actuated the stick though not as defined uh, uh, and as clear as a, a real mechanical switch, it does give you that response that lets you feel that you've actually got, you know, you've done the input and you know you don't need to move the stick any further. Which I think makes a huge difference over if you were to be playing on, uh, playing this sort of game with your sort of standard game controller. <laughs> we're going to get B on the first level. Of, uh, of Street Fighter. I'm absolutely appalling at the old Street Fighter games. Look at this! Let's try to take my, uh, my coins, probably 20 feet go. Oh dear, oh we got him! <laughs> Nothing to be proud of, beating the first level. Of course the buttons as well are mapped to the buttons there, and you can see them moving in uh, New Retro Arcade, which is cool. But, uh, I think uh, I think it's preferable using the analog stick with a haptic click than it is using the the D-pad. I, I just don't think the Steam D-pad as a directional pad works too well, to be honest. It would seem that the though it's usable, and you know if you're playing more casual games, it don't require that much uh, of a fast response. It would seem that the directional pad is it, it's just better with games where you're essentially using it as a mouse or this pad was a more sort of an options pad and allows you to select lots of different things uh, rather than it being an actual movement input and the analog stick with the haptic click seems to just be better or more concise maybe uh, with more configuration and fiddling you can get more you know you can get something that's more usable but I just it, it just doesn't feel responsive to me for, for something it doesn't it doesn't click with me Whereas uh, using the gyro for FPS games, for example, pretty much after after a little bit of practice, clicked, or you could immediately see where it would have uh, where it could work well. Oh, come back! You're Vin. Let's uh, let's try out some uh, bubble bubble. Let's go over here. Just look around here. Didn't just look around, could use the touchpad. And as you can see, I'm using the right touchpad basically as emulated maths. And that just works, that works fantastic with the Steam controller. So, really, the, the way I see the Steam controller is it's a sort of, it's like a, a, a jack of all tra trades. It's the, shi uh, the, the shift, <laughs> it's the um, Swiss army knife of controllers and better in my opinion than the sort of Xbox 360 pad or the uh, the PlayStation controller just because of its versatility and oh and the, its versatility and the haptic feedback that it gives all these games to be honest or as I said any game really is always going to be best played if you're using the input device that the game was designed for. So all these arcade games are always going to be better if you play them with a proper arcade stick, you know, proper clicky arcade stick. That's just simply, it's just simple fact. If, if a designer, whoa, we really got got my in. If a designer has developed a game with a controller in mind and they've gone through all the testing, all the development of the game with that controller, it will generally be better. Uh, although to contradict myself, it would appear that um, 
sort of console port games, mod recent console console port games actually work better with this controller than they do the Xbox controller which they probably designed it for. But that's probably because cons most console games now are essentially, oh, that's terrible, are essentially like almost wannabe PC games. I mean, Call of Duty started off as a PC shooter, then we sort of shoehorned into being a into being a console shooter. So all the all the console shooters are essentially mouse games that have been shoehorned into uh, game controller games. And then <laughs> all the uh, fighting games on console are again arcade games that were originally designed to be played on um, proper arcade joysticks. Uh, but being shoehorned into being able to be played with a with a console controller, so I'm getting destroyed here. This guy's on fire. Let's, uh, let's go to shoot. We're doing terrible. Here. I'm not doing a very good job of uh, demonstrating the C controller. I'm just having fun, just uh, clicking on all these arcade games and trying them out. Do some frog and some Cuba. Let's. Uh, Cuba would be interesting actually using the. Uh, I think the one of the arcade versions of that game used a a, a ball. Um, gold. Let's do 1942. Should be nice and responsive. Now I am uh, using my keyboard to uh, put coins and stuff in these machines because I've not bound the buttons. But obviously you can bind the the key that you want to use with the Steam controller um, to whatever you want. But I've just not got around to doing that yet. So I'm going to press Shift to put money in the machine and enter to start. Let's see how this goes. Oh. Clearly, the music in this game is absolutely top notch. <laughs> sound effects. Uh, the, the highest quality sound effects I've ever heard in anything. Ah! <laughs> that was close. And actually, from the from the last Steam video we did, we were playing uh, Geometry Wars using the right uh, touchpad to shoot, and that actually worked pretty well. So it just seems that really. The only real shortcoming of the Steam controller is using the left, the left touchpad uh, as a as a traditional directional pad. That I'd say is it's probably its weakest point. Come on, this feels really nice and uh, punchy though. Again, the the what the haptic the haptic click for when the joystick actuates really lets me know when I'm moving. Uh, and, and what's going to happen and why. But I, I think that will do. That sort of gives you a, a, a demonstration of the of the Steam Controller's uh, D-pad or directional pad with Super Mario. As I say, uh, not its best function. If I was to say that uh, the, the overall weakness of the controller, it is for using the, the left touchpad as a directional pad, but then it kind of makes up for it with the analog stick. And I would probably, or I'd, I'd definitely pick the Steam Controller with this analog stick and the, the clicking to play um, arcade games over the uh, Xbox 360 controller's D-pad, for example. It's, it just That just feels sloppy and horrible. Again, that feels like some kind of weird joystick with a D-pad stuck on top of it. So, better than the Xbox controller, but n nowhere near a replacement of a proper arcade stick. But the analog stick, pretty good with its haptic clicks. So... Uh, yeah, there you go. 2D <laughs> Steam Controller. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, check out New Retro Arcade. If you get a VR headset, definitely check out New Retro Arcade. It's absolutely stunning what they've achieved. And it's free to download. And of course, if, if the ROMs are abandoned, where you can just download them as well. And it's no problem. Uh, I'll see you in our next video that we do. Thanks for watching. And goodbye.